Hello, hello again, ladies and gentlemen, Chaos Wolf here, and welcome back to Elite Dangerous. Now, I think it's about time that we went back and uh, took another look at my mining tutorial. My mining tutorial has pretty much been up for quite a while, and a lot of the information in there is now out of date. So I think it's about time that we had a second look at mining. So welcome to the mining tutorial 2.0. First of all, what we are going to be doing is going and having a look at the very basic mining, and that is going to be done in this ship, the hauler. Because this is how I started off mining, and a lot how a lot of people will start off mining. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the hard points, and the first thing we're going to need is a mining laser. So we'll pick up a mining laser, and they cost... 6,800 credits, so they are not all that expensive. And in the hauler, you're only going to have one hard point, so you're only going to be having your mining laser. So, there it is, that's our mining laser. Uh, going into the internals, what we can do is we can go for a completely basic mining build. So, what we're going to need to do is get rid of the discovery scanner and uh, let's go over to module type and here we go this is what we want refineries if we want to have the most basic refinery possible we would go for this e1 refinery now this e1 refinery has what we need here called refinery bins and this is what we would actually store our uh, mined materials in first so that's uh, we refine enough of them to actually make one ton of the material we are mining. And this is the minimum you can have one bin. Uh, if you want to upgrade it, you can go uh, to better rated ones, although I would not recommend at all the, re uh, the rating D. Because the rating D has no extra benefits apart from uh, it's got more power draw, and that's really what we don't want. It's still got one bin, so it's there's no point in it whatsoever. If you want to go to any type of upgrade, you're going to go to a rating C, because then we get two bins. Rating B gets you three bins, and a rating 4 gets you uh, four bins. But what we're going to do is we are going to go for a rating E for the sake of it, because like I said, we're going to go for a budget build on the first attempt here. So we've pretty much got the basic, basic, basic necessities of what we need for this. But we have only got 8 tons of cargo space, and that is not a lot. Okay, so what I've done as well is I have actually upgraded both of the cargo racks to 8 ton cargo racks. So we've got a maximum of 16 tons of cargo space. Uh, but that is basically a massive, massive budget build of this ship. So that's the absolute minimum that you need. Admittedly you don't need the 10,000 for the two cargo racks. Now you could have those just as the default but uh, I'm upgrading because I do have the money. You don't have to if you don't want to. So that's the basic uh, build for mining. What I would recommend is actually upgrading some of the internal compartments. Reason being is we want more jump range because the more jump range we have the further we can go the less fuel we have the less money we have to spend on fuel. Now, we have an unladen jump range of uh, 10.46 light years, which isn't bad. Got laden 7.1. So that is going to be a bit of a limiting factor. So if you want to do long range uh, mining, you are going to have to actually upgrade a few internal compartments here. So what we've got now is we have what I think the pinnacle of uh, mining in a hauler should be. We've still got the lightweight alloys because there's no point actually upgrading them really. You can if you wish. The only downside to that would be you're going to be losing jump range. And I've upgraded pretty much everything apart from the frame shift drive and the power distributor to D-rated. Because D-rated modules are the lightest of all the modules. So if you're going for jump range, you always go for D. The reason the frame shift drive and the power distributor our A's is because we want performance out of this. The frame shift drive, obviously, because we want a much greater jump range. And the power distributor is because we want to be able to fire off the mining laser and boost our ship as often and as uh, long as possible. 
So that's why I've gone for the best power distributor. Plus, if we were to go and actually change this to a D, so D, 28.87 light years on Leyden. Yep, so pretty much all we are gaining from this is uh, just under 0.8 of a light year. It might make a difference to you, it might not. So that's pretty much how I think the hauler should look for mining. We've still got the two size 8 cargo racks inside. I've upgraded the shield generator to a D2 because, again, it's lighter weight and offers that little bit more protection. So what we're going to go do now is we are going to go and take a look at a little bit of mining in the hauler. Now there is a little trick you can use when you are out mining. If you are going into the ring systems of a nearby gas giant, what you can do is instead of actually going to the resource extraction sites themselves, what you can actually do is actually aim for the ring itself and travel and just keep going until you drop in. As long as you're going slow enough, you won't have a problem actually dropping in. And let's put all power into weapons. And let's see what we get from this asteroid. There we go. Osmium. Well, that's not bad at all. So what we do is we'd sit here and we will actually just mine this thing. Wait until we get a good few chunks off the lot. We've actually mined out all of the chunks from this asteroid. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to go, I have to go and scoop all these up now. So what we'll do is we'll open our cargo hatch. There we go. And you can see down right here that so uh, that's pretty much the crosshair for our cargo scoop. So what the best thing to do is to actually aim the fragment into the centre, at least with this ship, and just move forward slowly. There we go. And now it says resource unallocated. So what I'm going to need to do is go across to cargo, and here we are. We have Osmium and Colton. Now this is the reason I like having more than one hopper, or more than one bin, is that I can actually refine this one, and I can refine this one. If I only had one hopper, what I would have to do is actually refine one, and then select the eject button on the other one. So we can just keep going. There we go. So we have now actually completed our first ton of uh, material. We've actually got one ton of Colton, which is now sitting in our cargo racks. Uh, in the hopper itself, we have 5% Colton, 10% Lepidolite, and in the bins, we have 23% uh, of a ton of Osmium, 73% of a ton of Gold, and 57% of a ton of Indite. Now what happens is because we've just finished off a ton, we get to choose one of these two materials in the hopper to actually put into the now empty bin. So let's do the same, let's put Colton in there. Now before we can actually scoop anything else, what we need to do is vent the Lepidolite. And if we only had one hopper, we would have to be doing that for every single chunk of mineable material. Uh, which is why I like to go for at least two uh, hoppers, preferably three, but if at all possible, four or more. Because that makes mining so much faster and so much simpler. So that's pretty much how we would actually go around mining in the hauler. It's a little bit more hands-on, it is not as automated, and your profit margins are going to be a lot lower. What we're going to go do now is go and have a look at one of the larger ships. First of all, we'll have a look at the Adder. Now, as you can see, I've already set up the standard internal modules up pretty much the same way as I did with the uh, the hauler, apart from the sensors, which I'm fixing now. 
Uh, in the hard point, we still have one mining laser, but we also have two pulse lasers. You can, if you want, go for two small mining lasers and put your defensive weapon on the medium point. I just find it works better this way. Uh, because the medium mining laser mines faster and takes a lot less power draw. And this is actually the first time we actually get to use a medium mining laser because we actually do have a medium hard point on this ship. Now here you can see that we have got a 2D shield generator. Now originally with this ship you do have a, uh, a class 3 shield but I have knocked it down to a class 2 so we can have more internal space. Now the only thing I haven't added in so far is the refinery. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the class 2 refineries. Now if you remember the class 1 refineries both the E and the D rated had one cargo scoop which was not really that good. But now we can actually go to class 2 refineries, let's see. Oh there we go, look at that. The standard refinery for class 2, so the 2E actually has two cargo, uh, two refinery bins. The D has three, four, five and six. So we can have all the way up to six refinery bins which is a 50% increase. So what I'm going to go do is I am going to go and pick up a A2 refinery. Yes, that is a good whack of money. <laughs> As you can see there, it is uh, over a million for this. But the standard one is 12,600. So it is actually fairly cheap to get two refinery bins. I think if I remember rightly, it's actually cheaper. Here we go to get... There we go, yeah. So for 12 million, you can get two refinery bins, whereas for class one, you'd need to spend 54,000 credits to get one. So that is a much better uh, return for money. What we're going to do is I'm going to pick up a large refinery, uh, the, the biggest refinery I can. So there we go. So we've now got the same 16 tons. We've got 23 light year jump range. We have the same shield generators, but let's go over to the hard points. Yeah, we've still got some uh, power left, so let's go to module type. Here we go, we can pick up one A-class shield booster, and let's have a look. Which one can we actually go to? There we go, we can get a rating E as well. And we are still nowhere, we're still under our power draw. So let's exit. And what we need to do now is we actually need to go and set our modules, our fire groups even. So what we've got is pulse lasers and mining lasers set here. That's completely not how we want to have this done. So let's turn that off. And we are going to go and set collector limpet to 2 and mining laser to 1. So we have a second fire group for just for mining. The first fire group is going to be for defense. Not that we're going to be able to do that much defending, but at least we will be able to do something. So first of all, what we're going to do before we actually jump out is we're going to go and need to go to munitions. Because this is where we actually go and pick up our limpet controls. And these limpets actually take up cargo space, so we're only going to be able to take as many as we can actually fit in our cargo holds. So we'll go over, have a look in cargo. There we go, 16 tons of limpets. So we're going to be able to use 60 limpets before we're out, and then we're going to have to go and scoop. Okay, so here we are back again in Herbert Dock, and we have here a Type 6. Now, I think this is actually going to be one of uh, the better ships for mining, because it's got a good amount of internal space. As you can see here, it's got 80 tonnes of internal space. And with an A4 refinery, as you can see, we have 10 refinery bins. So that is absolutely bloody awesome. It means we can actually go around and uh, mine as much and refine as much as we want without having to worry too much about being uh, picky about what we're actually uh, cutting off the asteroids. Uh, as always, I have gone for pretty much mostly D-rated equipment apart from the power plant because we needed to upgrade it because this ship has a bit of deficiency when it comes to its power as you can see it only has a rated uh, a class 3 power plant so it's not going to have the greatest amount of power output 
We've got the best frame shift drive and again the best power distributor. But as for internals, this is one of the first ships where we are actually able to go and get a Prospect Olympic controller. So what that means is we can actually go and find out what is inside the asteroids before we actually go and even touch them with our mining lasers. And let's just go have a, have a quick look at the specifications of this uh, module. Here we go. With an A1 Prospect Olympic controller, we can actually control one Olympic up to a range of seven kilometers. So we can fire off our Olympic and we can find out what is in an asteroid from up to seven kilometers away. So that's very nice to actually have. And if we go down to the E rated Prospect Olympic, that still gives us a range of three kilometers. So we, you can actually quite happily go and have the lower rated ones, but I do prefer having the maximum range. At the end of the day, I like having the best rated ones because I would rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. And also we have two small mining lasers because this ship only has small hard points. So I think this is going to be one of the better ships for mining, especially if you're on a little bit more of a budget. But uh, I do think that uh, there is another ship that is going to take the crown of best mining ship. And what we're going to do is going to have a look at that. And for those of you who have already seen my 1.3 mining preview, you will already know that my most recommended ship for mining is actually the Asp Explorer. And here we are in a nice red ferro paint job, because I do think that's actually the best paint job to actually make this look like a miner, at least in my opinion. Uh, so let's go and have a look at what we are armed with. Uh, so we've got a grand total of all four shield boosters. We have two multi cannons and two beam lasers for defense, all on the small hard points. And in the medium hard points, we actually have two medium mining lasers. And what this is going to mean is that we can actually strip mine asteroids with insane amounts of speed. I'll show you what I mean when we actually get into the asteroid field. But for the moment, let's go and have a look at the internal loadout. Again, we've got lightweight alloys because we just want the longest jump range possible. We do only have a 23.51 unladen and a 19.1 laden jump range, but we do only have a B5 frameshift drive uh, because the dock that we're in doesn't actually stock an A5. But that is still some fairly good jump distances, even with a B5 frameshift drive. Now, for the rest of everything else, we do have the A-rated power plants and power distributor and thrusters. If we wanted to go for a bet for a more of a, a jump range, if you let's say if you wanted to actually do long-range prospecting, as several members of the Wolf Pack have actually been doing, A-rated thrusters and the A-rated power plant and so on, they will actually go for D-rated to get better jump range. So that's. Um, they can jump further and they can pretty much do exploration at the same time. So what they'll actually go and do is instead of going down here for the uh, four tons of cargo rack, what they might do is actually swap that out for an advanced discovery scanner. You can actually go and scan unscanned systems. What they might do as well is actually swap out the Prospector Olympic controller for a detailed surface scanner as well. But what we're going to go do is we are actually going to go out and have a look at a little bit of mining in this ship. Okay, so we've already looked at uh, the collector drones, but now we're going to have a quick look at the prospect drones and what they actually do. And what we need to do is, they, as we've already set them to a fire group, you can see them down here on, my, on the second fire button of my second fire group, what we then do is press the our fire button to fire off one of these prospectors. We can then select it. And when it connects to the asteroid, it'll tell you what is actually in that asteroid. And here we actually have quite a nice little asteroid. It's actually got 26% silver. So that's really quite nice. So we'll go and put everything back into weapons. And systems, there we go. So at least we have a little bit more protection. And we'll just go and strip mine this one down. 
And the great little benefit of having a limpet, uh, a prospect limpet even, is you can actually see how many minerals are actually remaining in the asteroid. There we go. And it will actually tell you when you have depleted the, uh, the asteroid, which is really nice to know. And you know what, guys? Just for the fun of it, I thought I would actually go and take a look at a mining build for an anaconda. Just because I can. <laughs> now, pretty much what this was was just a uh, modification to my current trading anaconda build. And I just recently realised that I'd actually forgotten to change the power distributor from D up to A. But it's not a big deal because I was actually able to strip mine an asteroid in about 10 seconds. And why was I able to do that? But what it was is I got three medium mining lasers. So quite literally, as I said, I was strip mining asteroids really quickly. I'd still got my three pul large pulse lasers and two of my missile racks, but I had to sell a couple of my, well, three of my shield boosters because I didn't have enough power to actually run everything else. But what else we had? Well, in grand total, we had uh, 368 tons of cargo space. So we had a 128 cargo, 364 tons, 132 and a 16. And we actually have gone out and done some mining, but I will actually look at that in a moment. We also have our A-rated uh, Class 4 refinery, so that gave us 10 refinery bins. And still we got the standard docking computer, because I just like being lazy and letting my anaconda dock itself. And the last thing that I really do want to cover with the build that I went for in my anaconda is the fact that you can actually double up on your drone controllers. I here have uh, two A5 controllers, and what that was doing was allowing me to actually control six limpets at a time. So, like I said, I was strip mining asteroids in 10 seconds, and about 20 seconds later, I had completely refined everything on the asteroid. So I could go from asteroid to asteroid, completely stripping an asteroid and and completely refining it in about 30 seconds. So that this ship is an absolutely insane monster of a mining ship. I did actually think that it was actually going to be completely ridiculous and not work as well as I thought it was going to, but it actually did work way better than I thought it was. Uh, not only that, but I could have gone much better with this ship if I'd upgraded the power plants more and changed from gimbaled to turreted weapons. Because that would have meant that I wouldn't have to have turned around so much to try and kill off all, all of the 20-odd pirates that were coming to attack me. I would have been able to just carry on mining and let my weapons actually deal with them themselves. But it's not a big issue. I came out of it almost completely unscathed. I think in the entire time that I was in there, I lost about 12 to 18% hull. And that's only because I uh, was a little bit out of it to begin with and allowed a wing of three to kind of wail on me for a little while before I realised what the hell was going on. But yeah, no, we went really insanely quick there. Now, how much was I able to mine? <laughs> I'll be honest, I was in a, I was here in Delcar in a high intensity, pristine, metallic resource extraction site. I got attacked by about 25 pirates, but yet I killed all of them. So that was fun. But how much did we actually manage to mine? We've actually mined 367 tons of <laughs> mineable materials. Now this is going to be some really insane amounts of profit. But let's actually take a look. We have here 111 million credits in my balance. Let's actually see how much we end up on. So let's see how much we can actually make. Because down here we can see that I've got uh, 111,254,382 credits. So let's see how much I have after that. And we will actually extrapolate how much I've made. So first of all, let's sell all the gold selling for just shy of 10 million per ton. There we go, that's 331,000. 
Okay. Moving on to the Osmium. Let's sell all of this. 165,000. Palladium. 57 tons. Let's see how much we get for this. Well, 800,000. 800, Next one. Uh, where are we? Platinum. Let's sell this. 20,000 each, pretty much. Half a million. Silver, 17. 80,000. Now let's move on over into the minerals. So, Bertrandite. Two hundred forty-four thousand. Galai. One hundred sixty-seven thousand. Okay. Indite. One hundred and eight thousand. And painite. So let's see how much we get for this. So seven tons of painite gives us quarter of a well, a quarter of a million credits. So that's not too bad. Let's see if there's anything else. Have we got anything else left in our cargo hold? Nope, that is pretty much everything. So that works out to be a grand total profit of 2,669,059 credits. Now, for three hours work, I think that is a little bit shabby, but then again, I wasn't being, I wasn't really cherry picking my way through the asteroid field. I was just picking up anything that I could and I have actually come to a system that doesn't have the best prices. So it is possible to make more money doing this, but uh, I was just trying to rush through it as fast as possible. Okay, well up until now we have actually covered ship builds and how to actually go out and mine. What we haven't looked is where to actually find places to go and mine and where the best places might be. Now the first stop for finding out where you want to go and mine is actually in the system map of the system that you are currently in. Now first things first, what you want to do is know what to look for. And here in Wolf 906 we actually have a fair few amount of things that we can actually go and mine from. First of all we have asteroid belts, there's quite a few of them here. We also have three gas giants with rings around them. We have uh, Wolf 906-1, Wolf 906-2, and Wolf 906-3. Now, the next thing you want to know is, are these actually worth coming and mining? Because not all rings are the same. They're not all equal. Uh, first of all, let's go and have a look at this one. And how we find out, we actually scroll down on the info panel here, and then we go and have a look at ring type. And the ring type here is icy. Now icy rings are completely useless for mining. You don't want to go anywhere near them. Because all it is, is ice, quite literally. And we can't sell ice. Again, over here, this is another icy ring. So these two planets are completely off the menu. Next, we're going to go and have a look up here at the asteroid belts. And what you can see here is ring type, rocky. Now these are the lowest form of uh, asteroid belt that, or even ring, that are actually usefully mineable. But because they're rocky, you are going to be getting more kind of minerals and less metals. So you're pretty much going to be getting materials that are of less worth than what you would really like to be mining. What you really want to do is look for something at least of this range. And here we have a metal rich ring. But you'll also notice that uh, Wolf 906-1 actually has two rings. It has B ring and A ring. B ring is icy, so that's the one we don't want. And A ring is actually the metal rich ring. Question is, how do you know which one is actually which? A is actually going to be the inner ring. So the higher up on this little list here, the closer to the middle the ring actually is. But there is actually something that is even more useful than a metal rich ring. And let's go and see if we can actually find one. Because I have a suspicion I know where we're going. Let's go over and have a look at Delcar. To the home of uh, Outlandish Pixel. 
There we go. We have a couple of planets with rings here. Now, I am assuming it's actually going to be this one here. There we go. That is actually exactly what we want. Ring type A. Dalkar 7A ring. Ring type metallic. Now, what met the difference is between metallic and metal rich is metallic actually has a lot more metal in there than metal rich. To me, it sounds a little bit counterintuitive saying that metal rich is actually worse than metallic, but that's how it is. And so pretty much you're going to want to look for metallic rings. Let's see what the rest of these are. This one actually has metallic rings on the inner and rocky on the outer. We have also metal rich over there and we have icy over here. So we have pretty much every type of ring possible in here in Delcar. Not to mention we have two orbitals and one of them actually being a refinery industrial. So they're going to be wanting those metals. They're going to be wanting those minerals. So you are going to be making a fair amount of money just for a short hop back and forth. You really won't need the best jump drives for this. But now I've been talking to you about the different types of um, rings. There are actually subcategories between these different rings as well, which I'll just go and tell you about now. Now, as you can see, these are metallic and these are rocky. But these are actually some of the best metallic and rocky rings in uh, the whole of Elite Dangerous. And how do we know this? We know this by looking here where it says pristine reserves. Now, pristine reserves are the ones that have almost been untouched by industrial mining programs. So they are going to be pretty much, as the name implies, pristine. So they are going to have a much higher chance of actually spawning the uh, the rarer metals and the really sought after ones for the really high value uh, minerals and materials. So basically, pristine are the best. And then we actually have different types of uh, reserves after that. It goes from pristine reserves to high reserves to uh, common reserves to low reserves. The lower down it goes, the less likely you are going to have the more expensive and the more profitable metals, minerals, materials, whatever you'll be getting from them. So what you are going to want to look for is the pristine reserves. Now I think this is pretty much everything you guys need to know about mining. Where to find your mining resource extraction sites, where to find your asteroid belts, how to set up your ships and how to go about mining. So, if you have enjoyed this video, please do hit that like button. It has been a fair amount more work than my usual videos, so please do hit that like button. And if you haven't already, please do join the Wolfpack by hitting that big subscribe button. You will get notifications from whenever I release new videos. And below my subscribe button, you will see links to my associated channels, so please do go and check them out, because they really do work hard on their videos. So until next time, Commanders. Keep digging and stay shiny.